Today I'm going to show you how to make shah plov, which is an Azerbaijani dish. Um, it's just incredible. I keep going back to it for all sorts of kind of like feasts or special occasions, whether it's just people coming over or I also feel like it's a really nice Easter dish um, that you might make this April. It's just great. I learned it in Azerbaijan. Um, I was taught this recipe by a, an amazing cook and woman, Zulia Kazimova. Credit needs to be given to all of the people that have kind of taught me something really special. And yeah, and it's, you know, not actually that complicated. It looks incredibly impressive, but you can make it as simple as you want. And as always, you can vary the ingredients. Um, today I've got like some basmati rice, which works really well. Um, I've got some dried sour cherries, but again, you can use raisins or cranberries or another dried fruit is absolutely fine. I've got some flaked almonds, but again, you can do pistachios or any other nut that you absolutely love. Then I've got some saffron, but if, you know, if you don't like it or it's not with you know, it's an expensive thing. You can always use some turmeric and that's also absolutely fine. I was going to give you that beautiful um, color. And then I've also got some coriander seeds and some human seeds and pumpkin and chestnuts. And you know, we're still in January here filming this. If you are making this in April and there's some wild garlic hanging around, you can always, you know, instead of the pumpkin, you can always use a bit of like wilted wild garlic. We'll get to it though. I'll show you what I'm what I'm doing with this thing. Also, you can use like slow cooked uh, lamb or a, a layer of slow of like um, poached chicken or something. I'll I'll show you later. But for now, this is what I'm doing. Oh, and shallot. I forgot. And also, traditionally, you would use these really large sheets of flatbread uh, called lavash. And when I used to live in North London by Green Lanes, uh, we used to have like really beautiful shops there where you can you could get like an Iranian lavash and that was amazing. At the moment, I just don't have anything like that nearby. That's why I know it doesn't look as impressive, but these are very simple, you know, wheat tortillas and they work as well. So I'm going to show you how you can uh, make this amazing looking plov with something that you can get in your corner shop. One of the best things in this recipe is that there's quite a lot of clarified butter, aka ghee involved, which I love. I love the flavor. I love it that it just keeps for so long and is just such a beautiful thing that is extremely useful because it doesn't burn. So you can like, you make a big batch and then you fry your eggs in it or whatever, you know, it's just such a beautiful thing. And of course, you're more than welcome. There are so many good brands for ghee at the moment. I use super ghee quite a lot with like Himalayan salt and CBD and all sorts of things. But it's very easy to make at home and I'm going to show you how right now. So I've got my one pan, then another pan that fits into it but doesn't touch the bottom basically. Uh, you can also use a bowl, like basically we're just going to melt this butter, like a pack of butter over a bain-marie. Um, I just find having another pot useful because, I don't know, you can just like use the handle. So I'm just going to grab the hot water. Just make sure that the water doesn't touch the bottom of this pan. Boom. I mean, we're almost there basically. This butter is going to melt and then all of the fat is going to be in one layer and all of the kind of like milk solids that usually burn are going to either collect on top, which we're going to skim off or go all the way to the bottom, which we're going to leave there once we, you know, uh, pour the butter out when it's done. And yeah, I mean, so simple and such a delicious, amazing thing. Okay, so now we're going to prep the rice, which is actually quite simple to do. Um, my teacher Zulia used to soak it in cold water for like an hour or two, but I find the basmati rice that you find here in the UK, you just rinse it really well to get rid of the starch. The more starch you wash out, the more kind of like separate grains of rice you get in the end, okay? So we've got like cold water, I've got a bowl, I've got my rice, I'm just gonna fill it up. The water is super milky. And then I'm just gonna drain it off. And I'm gonna go again. Like sometimes it will take four goes, sometimes it'll take a few more. Just do it until the water runs pretty much clear. Okay, so I've washed it 10 times and this is what I have the patience for. Like this is fine. 
this is pretty pretty clear to me. It's okay. Okay, so we've got a pot of boiling water here, just quite a lot of water. Uh, we're just blanching the rice, so it's not like it needs to absorb it all or anything like that. So hot water, I'm going to put a generous amount of salt in uh, just to season that rice. And another thing that I do, which is not traditional, but I just love when all of the rice is quite yellow in color. So I add a little bit of um, turmeric into the water whilst I blanch the rice. And then, and then it looks yellow and beautiful and has a little bit of that flavor as well. So this is our washed rice. I washed it quite a few times until it became kind of like, um, you know, as clear as I had the patience for. And as I say, Zulia used to soak it in salted water. Um, well, I'm sure she still does, but you know what I mean. Okay, and that's it. I'm just going to put it in, give it a little stir, and immediately I'm going to put a timer on for seven minutes and have your uh, draining situation at the ready. So have your colander by the sink so we can drain it as soon as it's had seven minutes, okay? There, you can, well, you can see that the rice is becoming a little bit more yellow, you know, it's just yeah. nice. Okay, after the seven minute boiling, we're going to drain it. Drain it, make sure that you got rid of the thing. And then the biggest tray that you've got at home, or even a couple if, if yours are a little bit small. And we're just gonna put it on. I need a little spoon, hold on. Put your rice on, just like that. And then we're gonna spread it, just to make sure that it, uh, that it cools down. All right, it's nice and yellow, beautiful. And then I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna take it outside just to speed things up and so it doesn't keep overcooking. In Azerbaijan, they've got these special, co like flat colanders that you drain the rice and you just leave it there to cool off. And I actually brought one, I, actually, I took it on the plane with me and then I lost it at the festival, don't ask. Okay. All right. Well, it's nice and icy today, so that's going to be done in a sec. Um, so I've got flaked almonds, but as I said, you can use any other nut. And I've got coriander and cumin. Um, I'm going to toast and then grind them, but if you've got them pre-ground and that's what you want to use, that's also fine. We're going to use them in a bit with our shallots and the pumpkin filling. So I'm going to put the spices in here together. And then I'm going to put the nuts in here. And you kind of, you, you have to watch the nuts. You can also do it in the oven about eight minutes at 170 degrees or something. Um, but to be honest with you, I'm personally so bad. Like I put them in and then I'll start doing something and I burn, I've burned so many nuts in my life. So now I just put them in the pan, especially with something like flaked almonds and I just watch like a hawk. Okay. And with coriander and cumin, as soon as you kind of like hear a bit of a pop and you can smell that beautiful, their beautiful oils kind of like being released, you can straight away put them into a pestle and mortar and grind them with a tiny bit of salt and you know, you're there. It doesn't have to be pulverized completely, just like into a nice, uh, whatever, whatever you have energy for, it's fine. Action. If you're toasting your nuts like for something else, um, it is actually quite nice to cook to kind of like toast them in a bit of oil or clarified butter. It'll, they will get browner more evenly. Um, but for this, because we're going to have so much clarified butter in the whole plov, you'll see that I'm just doing this kind of thing. I'm just like toasting them in the pan dry. Um, <laughs> my, my instinct is just like to put my paw in there. Like, don't put your hand in there, you're going to burn it. I don't have any feelings on my fingertips at all, so I use my hand a lot. But anyway, so here we are, like, play around with the heat. Make sure that it's not... These are almost done, I can already smell them. Um, and these nuts. You don't have to go crazy. Like, when you start seeing a little bit of color here and there, maybe switch it off and just leave it in there in the pan. 
or if you feel like some of them are already starting to burn, just put them into a bowl so they don't keep cooking and getting burned. So it smells so good, a bit lemony from the coriander and obviously that amazing musky cumin smell and look at that. Also done and we're going to just put them to the side for a sec. There, look, nice, nicely browned. Okay, so saffron. Um, Zulia, my teacher, you, in Azerbaijan said that they don't actually put boiling water over, over saffron. She said that it loses its delicate flavor. So she actually uses hot water and I follow suit. So I've just got some hot water from the tap. So it's hot, but it's not boiling, okay? And I'm gonna put quite a bit in because I'm going to use some of this liquid. You know how I love to deglaze my onions or whatever I'm caramelizing with flavorsome liquid. So I'm going to use a little bit of this saffron water and then we're going to put the saffron into our onions and pumpkin, etc. So that's it. Just leave it to soak for whilst you're doing everything else. Okay, the shallot, um, I'm just going to peel and slice, uh, but you can also use regular onion whatever you want. It just adds like a really nice sweetness. Oh, it's annoying when it does that, isn't it? I'm just like, just get rid of this kind of like skin. And we're just gonna slice through it. You can dice, but for this, sliced is fine. All right, so literally just, the thinner you get, get it, the quicker it will caramelize. So now we're gonna work on this kind of like delicious shallot pumpkin, chestnut, dried fruit, nut flavor that's gonna go on the top of the plof when you turn it out. This bit is actually not necessary. Um, Zule used to make it with uh, chicken and shallots and everything. I do this chestnut and pumpkin thing because that's a combination that I've learned in central Azerbaijan, like they love their pumpkins and chestnuts there in the Gebele uh, area. Um, and also it's just like a really tasty thing and you can use in that, in other situations like dumplings or like stuff it into your perishki or something, you know, it's one of those things. And let's have a look at our butter. So this has been happening. So all of these milk solids that burn have been gathering on top and at the bottom of the pan. And look, this golden clear liquid is gold. This is what you want. This is the, literally the fat which is delicious and it doesn't burn and it just tastes so special. So I'm getting rid of this um, as in like I'm putting it into a bowl, but sometimes when I make bread or, you know, if I'm going to make a bread or anything else, I'm just going to put it inside the dough. So I'm even not wasting these little bits because, you know, they're just like milky bits that are not bad or anything. I just don't want them in my clarified butter because I don't want things to burn when I cook with it. Um, that's it. Look, you've already got this golden elixir uh, on top and we're gonna, we can already, it, it can go for a little bit longer, the clarified butter, but I, I can already skim a little bit off and cook my shallots in it. So this is exactly, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna like, ooh, ooh, like watch out that you don't uh, make a mess. Uh, I'm just gonna skim some off and put it into my pan, okay? So about like generous, three tablespoons or so. Something like that. Then put it on and as soon as it heats up, we're gonna put our sliced shallots in. Um, and then whilst your shallots, cause you want them, they need a little bit of time to cook. So while they are cooking and caramelizing, I'm going to uh, peel and whatever, what am I doing? Grating my pumpkin. So look, really beautiful, clear butter and our shallots. I'm just gonna give it a second. I'm so impatient all the time. I'm just like, ah, I'm just gonna put it in. What temperature Wait. is the pan? Oh yeah, what uh, heat it's on. Uh, at the moment it's like on medium high. So we're gonna like start them off with a bit of, with a bit of heat and then we're gonna lower the heat and let the onions kind of like, we're, what we're doing is just teasing the natural sugars out of the onions. Okay, so this is making a nice noise. Here, hear that, that's great. And as always, remember when I told you about the 
salt. It's really good to add some salt as soon as you start cooking your onions because the salt draws out the moisture and there's less chance of burning them if you forget or whatever. But always be on the, you know, listening it out to them. If your pan has gone dry, it's not going to make a noise and that means that your shallots are, gonna, are burning. Um, also go by your, obviously your nose as well. So here we are, I'm just gonna leave them here. So we've started them off on medium heat. I'm just going to lower the heat a little bit. But I'm just gonna keep an eye on them, yeah? I'm not gonna like walk away. So that's it. They're just, and it smells amazing already. Okay, now let's do the pumpkin. Um, I've got this little one here that I want to use up. You might not need the whole thing. Oh, this is a toughie. Yeah, it's fine. So I'm actually not gonna use masses. I'm gonna use, I'm gonna grate it. So I'm gonna use this like slightly bigger half basically. So just get rid of the seeds. I need my bin. Well, you know, keep preaching about having the, the bin bowl and I don't have it today. Right, now, so I've deseeded it and now I'm going to put it on the I mean, we might be able to peel it with a peeler. Let's see, sometimes it's, it's a bit annoying. I'm just gonna do it with a knife. It's just, I don't know, I feel like it's safer. So put your brown vegetables on the cut side. If you're cutting like a courgette or, or um, aubergine or whatever, just slice a little sliver off so you can put it on the cut side and then it doesn't roll around. And the same with the pumpkin. Uh, and then I'm just going to work my knife around and get rid of the skin, okay? Just like this. And then around two. Let's cut this bit off. Maybe I'm just gonna go in like this. Just be careful. Just make a couple of incisions. Then again, put it on the, this bit is really annoying. I'm just gonna break it off, just like that. And that's it, and then put it on the other side and just cut it off like that. And you know, all pumpkins are different. Maybe yours is quite easy to peel with a peeler, you know, in which case, do that. Okay, so the pumpkin is peeled. Um, I just realized that my tortillas were just hanging around and getting dry, so I'm literally just going to wrap them up so they don't dry out more. And just put them to the side, okay? And now, Make sure that your onions are not burning and you know, you've got your beautiful saffron liquid here. So as always, you can just add a little splash just there and deglaze it a bit and help them along. Okay, so you can dice it into small dice, but actually, you know, I quite like grating it on the rough side of the grater. So just here. So I'm literally just gonna do that. Okay, the pumpkin's grated, it's kind of ready to go. Let's grind these spices though very quickly. So I've got my toasted coriander seeds and cumin seeds. I'm going to put a generous like, sprinkling of salt in and then I'm gonna give it a grind. Oh, it's just, can you smell it? It smells good, right? It's just such a simple thing, but it just smells so good. That's why, I mean, you can use powdered spices, but there's just the magic happens when you do this and it's just, I don't know, to me it's like sensory therapy or like, I don't know, perfume therapy. It's just amazing. Makes me feel so happy. So I've got these spices and actually I'm gonna put them in before I put the pumpkin in. <gasps> it's getting dry, but do not worry because we have this. Yeah, a bit of saffron water. Just scrape, 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 scrape. Put the spices in. Oh, the smell is just insane. It's off the charts. It's just so, no? It's off the charts. Right, it's really? off the charts. The smell is great. Uh, now the pumpkin can go in as well. Whoop. We're just gonna cook it off a little bit. So yeah, chestnuts, unlike in Ukraine, are actually wildly, wildly? Widely used in central Azerbaijan. So it's not out of place here at all. Um, so I had them vacuum packed, so they came in this one big blob, so I'm just kind of like 
chopping through them, chop one way, then chop another way. They just add a nice layer, nice texture, sweetness. With those sour cherries, it's just going to be so dreamy, this whole thing. And literally, we're almost there, guys. We're, we're nearly there. It's not that hard. Right, Kai? Like, would you? Right. Yeah, you can, you can do it. You love Easy. your pies. All right, cool. So let's put the chestnuts in. That's quite a lot. I'm just going to put... I've put half of what I cut. Uh, those are not going to be wasted. I'll put them into another like filling, into a dumpling filling or something. Gonna keep cooking it, maybe gonna add the rest of that saffron water. Actually, I'll do it now. I'll raise the heat so it bubbles off. So we're adding all of that saffron flavor and just making everything kind of like cook down and rehydrate those um, sour cherries. And our filling is done. And instead of pumpkin, as I say, if you had some leftover, like slow cooked lamb or some roast or poached chicken, you just break it up into pieces and you add it instead of the pumpkin and the chestnuts into the shallots. And there's your kind of like really nice meat layer in the plop. So you can really play around or like think of something. You, I'm sure that you can come up with so many creative uh, layers. Yeah, so medium heat for this. You know, I've added all of the saffron water, but you need to kind of like uh, let it evaporate and absorb into the filling. So we don't want this layer to be too wet. Like you want it to be dryish. Just like this. I mean, we're, we're nearly there. You see, like when I do this, there's no liquid hang hanging around. But it's all looking delicious. It smells next level. It's really good. Okay. Oh, maybe taste it and make sure that it's, that it's really nicely seasoned. I've got my spoon here. I'm just going to go. Mm. It's good. Cause I added the salt to the spices and I had salt with the onions. It's actually really nicely seasoned. Okay. Done. Okay. So it's best that your kind of filling layer is cool before you uh, pack it into the plov. So I'm just going to do my favorite thing and take it outside to cool down and grab my rice because that will be cool by now. Okay, so this cools and this can come inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm just going to kind of like separate it a little bit so it's not so clumped up. And it's, you know, it's cool and it's, it feels, it's al dente. So yeah, it's like partly cooked, but not completely. It's gonna cook slowly in the oven with all of the butter and the filling and the crispy shell around it. It's just going to be fantastic. Okay, with your whole Banbury situation, watch out, because the water does boil off and then you can get like a really unsavory burnt uh, pan situation. So I'm just gonna switch it off um, I'm going to take more of the stuff off the top of the butter and put it into my little pot here. Okay. And you know, if there are tiny little bits left over and you didn't get it all in, like don't stress out, that's fine. And then I'm just going to pour it. I'm going to pour the clarified butter into this bowl. And look at that beautiful golden situation. Um, and then look, Kai, look, look inside. You see all of that kind of like more milky stuff collecting at the bottom? Leave it be. Like stop at some point. Just stop. Put it in here. Use it in your bread making or whatever. Or, you know, compost it. It's fine. Okay, we're ready to assemble. I've got kind of like a smallish uh, cast iron pot here. Um, the smaller and taller it is, the taller your plov will be. If you've got a bigger one, it's okay. It'll just be a bit more shallow, but it will work as well. But this is kind of like the ultimate size for the amount of rice which I've given you, which was 400 grams of raw rice. Okay, so then we'll grab our flatbreads, which have been kind of covered and haven't been getting too dry. 
And what I'm gonna do, so in Azerbaijan, like get this, that's amazing. So they would have like a vat of clarified butter and then just go like, whoop, <laughs> just like put it in and start layering the thing. Um, it would take too long to make this much clarified butter and you know, we'll, we're just gonna go like slightly UK style. So we're gonna brush them quite uh, well all around like this is gonna crisp up and make that beautiful shell so on both sides and then also give your pan a little um, yeah so I'm just doing the sides and the bottom of the pan also just to make sure that it doesn't get stuck so when you turn it out it's gonna be you know just whoop and it's just gonna come out all right so I've done my first one and this is what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna, we need this kind of like layer going up. So I'm just gonna do this kind of thing, okay? I'm gonna show you afterwards also what you can do with a really massive kind of traditional lavash. It's gonna be a funny one, but yeah, you'll see. So then the second one, I'm just gonna go like this. And I'm going to put it here. And it's going to go up, okay? And then I'm going to do another one. And on the other side, very generous. Because can you imagine? This is going to be so tasty. And then I'm going to put it, the third one, like this, okay? So we've got three here and they're all overlapping. But I'm also going to put one in the middle just to close this gap and just make sure that we've got a proper lid there. Actually, let's do four. Let's do one, two, and then another one here. And then we're gonna go at the bottom. And I'm buttering these here in the, like in a clean tray, just so I don't waste any butter and you know, it's fine. So now we're gonna go with our last layer and I'm just going to put it here that's it like your your lavash situation your layering is done all right whilst we're here Kai I know this is going to be a bit ridiculous and funny but I'm going to do it but like okay imagine hold on let me just wash my hands because this is really good okay This is not an actual pan, yeah? This is, I'm just <laughs> demonstrating what you can do if you've got a really big piece of lavash, yeah? Which I don't today, so I can't show you how to do it for this pan. But imagine this is your regular size pan, yeah? This is your pan. And this is your massive lavash that you've procured from this amazing Iranian shop or Armenian shop or whatever. So I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. Just do like the big lavash. So big lavash, your normal size pan. I'm gonna grab my knife and I'm going to make incisions just like this. So you've got kind of like the base here, but then you can, and then what you do is you go like this and then you've got it all done in one go. And then you layer the thing, blah, blah, blah. And then you close it like that on top and it's all done with like one massive piece of lavash. Does that make sense? That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay. And we're going to put the nuts, some of the nuts, on the bottom. So you kind of almost have like a protective layer so it doesn't sog things up too much, okay? So I'm just gonna put our gorgeous toasted nuts on the bottom. And I'm gonna reserve a little bit to put through the rice as well. And then I'm gonna grab, I'm just gonna grab this spoon, it's fine. And I'm gonna put the filling quite loosely, you know? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put half of it here and then half of it as a middle layer between the rice. I think that's gonna be really nice. Just layer it up. Normally I just do this layer, but actually today, why not? Let's just off piece a little bit so quite loosely yeah don't pack it in or anything it needs to be kind of like a loose situation 
Now for our rice. We are not going to pack it in. We're just going to very loosely kind of like sprinkle it around. As you're doing it, separate it with your fingers so it's nice and loose. Just like that. And remember, we've, uh, when we parboiled it, we seasoned it really nicely. And you know, it's cool. I'm gonna put a little bit more in. Okay. And now I'm gonna put a bit of the, drizzle a bit of this butter in into the rice first make like little holes here just like that okay and then i'm just gonna drizzle that in i mean look this is not like i don't care i know people are like oh butter oh it's so fatty like come on this is this is a feast like go for it you need you need the butter as i say like in azerbaijan it'll be like soaking in clarified butter and that, the birds are very lively today and then i'm gonna put the second layer of my filling here and also the nuts. Okay. All right, this is gonna be so nice. Super taste. Just gonna keep a little bit of this for, and, then, and then some of these nuts here as well. And then when you cut it, it's gonna all like fall out of the pie with your like rice and your nuts and the dried fruit and pumpkin it's just gonna be so taste okay and now the rest of the rice is going to go in this is gonna be a tall kind of like a nice fat pie okay and the little thing that I demonstrated for a little mini pie or a mouse I'm not going to waste I'm just going to put it on top of here so the last layer is like loads of rice actually sorry more of this situation here and just a little bit of the filling situation on top and now I'm gonna so this is also buttered I'm gonna put this here just like that this is our bottom it doesn't have to be cut it's just because I was demonstrating the thing for you it can be just a solid uh, piece of thing and then I'm just going to close this and it should oblige and stay in place. But if you feel like, ah, it just keeps on popping up, like um, you can put like little toothpicks in here or something, but this is fine. Like this is absolutely fine. I'm just gonna grab a lid and put it on top and then we're gonna put it in the oven for 30 minutes at 180 degrees. Then we're gonna take the lid off and cook it for another five or 10 minutes until the bottom is super crisp and we're done. Okay. just the last I promise last bit of buttering not that you're complaining I'm sure um, of the lavash situation and I can't find the purple lid and we don't have time so I'm just gonna put a lid that's not purple but fits on there and then we're gonna stick it into the oven and check it in 30 minutes you can always do this, all of these steps and have it ready and put it in your fridge. So do your prep in the evening when the kids are asleep and you just got like a little bit of chill out cooking time. You prep it, you put it in the fridge in the morning, bake it. Oh, oh not in the morning, whenever you're serving it, bake it then and you're fine. And it's like a really good get ahead recipe. Dun, dun. The moment has come. The flow is done beauty yeah, switch this off it actually like it it works every time the whole turning out thing but i'm still like it feels really like titillating i don't know okay so i'm just going to grab it kind of like this way um because hold on i'm just gonna put it here and then i'm gonna put the plate on 
and then I'm gonna go underneath with my thumbs like this but make sure that you've got a towel okay and I'm holding the plate so I'm holding these underneath with my thumbs and I'm holding this here and I'm gonna go in one go just like flip but watch out because the butter can kind of like splatter so do it gently okay one two three go Boom. Da, da, da. Da, da. And then we're just gonna put the rice in and look how kind of beautiful that is. Don't worry that it hasn't come out as a piece, like this is fine. You've got the crispy thing. You've got your rice, you've got the beautiful thing, pickles, salad, done. It's so good. Mm. Mm. And you know the, the fermented celeriac with chili, just on the side? Just with the richness of the butter and the spicy and the... Oh. The spice is spot on. Mm. And there's the crispy outside. Make it. You gotta make it. If, if it's not a festivity thing, just make it and eat it. Because it wasn't that hard, was it? Yeah, but on the It looks impressive, but it's just. And you can do so many things with leftovers or whatever. I'm gonna write it all in a newsletter. It's great. Mm.